Hi there, and welcome to Draw With Me. I'm Danny Gregory, and this is the first Draw With Me of 2022. How do you like 2022 so far? I've already managed to break one of my New Year's resolutions, although I'm back on the wagon. I had a day off, I'm back on the wagon. So it still counts as a resolution, I think, even though I missed a day. I have a very robust monkey in my head around these around these issues who does not like me breaking my promises to him but you know i am just here to serve so good so um thanks for joining me today is going to be fun today is going to be fast paced i'm calling this 10 in 20 so you're going to emerge from this session with at least 10 drawings we might even go more than than that and they're going to be fast and you're going to need something to draw on and something to draw with we'll get to that in a minute so start scrambling around looking for those items um you're going to need two eyeballs even one eyeball will do you're going to need one pen probably and you're going to need uh, I don't know, a sketchbook would be nice, hence the name. So yeah, now if you're intimidated, if you say, oh, I'm new to drawing, trust me, it'll be fine. Anybody can do this. It won't be hard, but it will be fun, and it will be, uh, you might get aerobic. You might get to that point where you are slightly out of breath, a slight sheen of sweat upon you, and... Uh, you know, you're, you will feel tingling finger muscles after this. So, yeah, you, you can. I'm, in fact, I'm going to set my, my watch so that I get credit for this because it's going to be that intense. All right, good. So, yes, I see uh, lots of familiar names here in the feed. It's nice to see you all back here, those of you who've been away. It's nice to have Helen back as a regular person and... I see Lenore is joining us again, and of course, Kosha. So thank you uh, all for being here, Kosha. Um, I got a nice text from Kosha this morning because she has been listening to Art for All, the podcast. It's a new season of Art for All. It just began a couple weeks ago with me and my buddy, John Muir Laws, talking about, oh, speaking of my buddy, here's the leaf blower. Um, speaking about all kinds of things to do with, you know, how we think as creative people, as, as artists. I've heard from some people that they like it a lot. I've even heard from some people that they've listened to it repeatedly, the same episode. I guess it's background, good background music while you're drawing. So um, if you haven't subscribed, you can. You can subscribe basically anywhere. If you have a, if you have a phone that you listen to podcasts on, you can, it will tell you how to get art for all. And if you don't have a phone or you don't want to deal with listening to podcasts, you can watch it on YouTube. Every episode is up here in its entirety. And you can also even see our, our uh, gorgeous mugs while we are recording it. So it's all here. Um, what I also want to tell you that we have uh, a workshop coming up in, what is it, 16 days? It's going to be a lot of fun. And... Um, Kate Lagali, who's teaching it, I think she, I'm going to have her on next week, and we're going to talk about drawing with pencils and colored pencils and watercolor pencils and all that kind of stuff. So um, you will have a chance to, you still have another you know, week to sign up, but you might as well rush and do it today. Up to you, really. Um, yes, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. You know, watercolor pencils are an interesting thing. They're one of those things that you think you know about, you think you know how to use, and then you see someone who actually knows how to use them, and you go... Oh, yeah, uh, I have a lot to learn. So, um, yes, I see in the chat that some of you are celebrating some of the ideas that we talked about in this thing. Uh, it was really fun. I mean, it's it's so much fun to have a really good conversation. You know, how often do you really get to do that? And how often do you get to do it, particularly during the pandemic? Uh, having just have a a conversation that isn't about work or isn't about your family or isn't about the pandemic, but it's just about ideas and experiences and, 
you know, perspectives on stuff. And so you don't get to do it that often, but I do. I get to do it every week when um, I hang out with Jack Laws and we jump on and we set a topic and then we just kind of go at it. And uh, we're trying to keep it down to an hour. I know it sounds ridiculous. A whole hour of jabbering. But think about it. You know, an hour isn't a long time for a good conversation. So, yeah. Um, and that's about it as far as that goes. Oh, so the, the workshop, of course, if you're a Spark member, you get it for free. So make sure that you have time on Saturday. If you can't make it on Saturday, of course, we'll give you the recording. So don't worry about that. Um, all right, where am I going to go next? So, okay, so are, you, are we ready to start doing this new thing that I've come up with? It's not really a new thing. I think we've done something kind of like this before, but um, it is newish, I think. Newish, right? So, here, let's, let's, let me jump to it. All right, so this is what I'm calling it 10 in 20, because we're going to do 10 drawings in about 20 minutes. There's going to be two minutes of drawing and then a 15 second break. And then there's going to be a repeat, another, another piece. So I'm going to give you pieces of reference photography images to draw from. And they're going to be very different. They're, the subjects are all over the place. Um, lots of different, um, really, really random kinds of things that I'm going to be showing you. But um, as you can see, our sponsor is uh, going to play a major role in this. So you will see um, our, our sponsor uh, manipulating the reference or determining the reference, as a good sponsor should do. Um, I'm, I've, you know, I've been a longtime user of this product, S. You know, I, I, I mean, I couldn't live without it. I think, uh, you know, what is it? What is uh, sketching without S? What is a sketchbook without an S? I have to say S is one of the few letters that isn't in my name, is it? Yes, I have no S's. So I am, I'm forced to go out and get additional S's to, um, you know, to round things out because I don't have any S's. So, all right. We are ready to uh, begin. So here's, here's how it goes. Let me get my sketchbook. I got my, my, I'm using my good one. This is my good sketchbook. A lot of times when I do these kind of scrappy, fast things, I don't use my good sketchbook, but, but I feel like drawing in my good sketchbook, which is a nostalgie sketchbook from Hanamula. And, um, you know, let me stop that because it was getting annoying. Um, and, Here's what I want you to think about. We're going to be doing at least 10 drawings. What are you going to do them on? Like, in other words, are you going to do them all in one big page in your sketchbook? Are you going to do them on separate pages? I want you to think a little bit about how you're going to fit these together, you know, or not. You can just decide, I want to do quick drawings, knock them out, and move on. But just give it a second's thought. Like, what is your perspective on this? If you really want to press yourself, Here's what you can do. Gather up a whole bunch of different art supplies. And every time we switch topic, every time we get a new subject, change what you're drawing with. Draw with a brush. Draw with a pencil. Draw with a red pencil. Draw with a black marker. Draw with a brush pen. You could each time do a different one if you really want to get hardcore, kind of like circuit training. Personally, I'm going to stick to one pen. But... Um, otherwise, you decide what you want to do. Okay, here we go. Without further ado, ado. Is it a do or a do? No, it's a do. It's a do. It's not a do. What am I talking about? Let's begin. So, literally, this image is going to be up for two minutes. And when it's gone, it's gone. It's going to be gone. And then you're going to see me again. Okay? Are we ready? Three and a two and a one. Oops, I gotta show you what I'm doing. Here we go. All right, a nice juicy strawberry. You, know, you can interpret it if you want to. If you say, you know what, 
I'm not going to draw a strawberry that looks exactly like this photo. That's your call. You are the artiste. Um, but if you want to draw a strawberry, here's what one looks like. Just in case you've forgotten. Um, and as you can see, we have um, just a little over a minute left. So make sure you're making some good progress. You can plan to come back to this if you want to. But I'm trying to knock out whatever I'm going to do in this time. Yeah, there's... Uh, I'm trying not to be too random with these seeds. You know, you could... You can just kind of pepper a bunch of dots all over it, but I think it makes it's it makes it feel more genuine if you um, you know try and draw sort of using the reference. Just to say, okay, around how many of these things are there, and uh, you know how because that randomness makes it feel more real. Life is kind of random. Nature is kind of random. And uh, oops, we're almost out of time. 12 seconds. Possibly less. So. Oh, good. The leaf flower is... Ah, that's it. Pring. All right. Go. We only have 10 seconds. I don't even... I can't even remember what the next one is. But I'm sure it'll be great, whatever it is. Here we go. Two, one, and it is... Ah, a seahorse. Excellent. I have... You know, I think so far, I, I don't believe I've ever really drawn a strawberry. And I don't believe I've ever drawn a seahorse. Kind of an interesting thing. Seahorse, a very, very strange looking creature. Yeah? Very strange. Beautiful tail. Oh, God. It's cute. I honestly, I do, I think if I, oh boy, let me turn this down a bit. I think honestly, if I'd been asked to draw a seahorse, I, uh, I I don't know that I could have figured out. Like for instance, I just I didn't realize that they have this sort of grid thing on them. It's kind of cool. It's kind of nice. Mine's got sort of a larger belly. Maybe it's pregnant. Isn't there something with like seahorses that the males carry the babies or something like that? I seem to remember something weird like that goes on with them. Um... They have some big cheek thing. Oh no, we're almost out of time. Seven seconds. I don't think I did it justice. That was tough. That was a tough one. Okay, let's see. Boy. Uh, what? Oh no, here we go. Stapler. Hmm, this is like the this is like the stapler in one of my favorite movies. Of course, you know what it is. Office Space. God, that movie, I have seen it so many times and it is so it's so great cuz it's so true. Anybody who's worked in a big corporation knows of what it speaks. People in it are just exact. I mean, can't say I exactly miss that experience, 
of working in a big company, but I do miss the people, even the really crazy ones. Although I work with crazy ones too. Just kidding. I only work with extremely sane people now. And my wife. I think she's I think she's not on actually. She's going to tennis. Maybe she's gone already. So I can say whatever I like. I kid, I can say whatever I like in front of her most of the time. Absolutely. Ooh, that's a strange looking stapler. Sort of mushroom like stapler. All right, let's see where we go now. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay, a skyscraper scraper of sorts. So slightly strange design. Seems like almost like a building that maybe only exists in a, in a architectural model. Um, but, or maybe it's in like Dubai or something or Shanghai. Has a bit of that vibe. What do you think? Are you are you intimidated by the fact that we're now that we've drawn so many different kinds of things? You're like, oh, no, I can't draw buildings. Oh no. Yeah, you can. They're just like staplers. They're the same. Same as seahorses. Can't draw perspective. I don't think I have time to draw all this grid on it. I totally left out the back. Is that like a swimming pool down there, it looks like? Yeah. Yeah, this is not a real building, I don't think. Or if it is, it's not a real skyscraper. But that's what you get when you get cheap reference. Cheap. All right. That's a, okay, it's a strange, strange sort of building. But uh, I think I, I think I got most of the bits in it. Yeah. Whew. All right. Here we go. Gary Cole. His grace is. He played Lumberg. Yes, I, Lumberg is the, is a great one. Okay. Oh, this is a Subaru. Subaru. Subarus seem to become more and more popular of late. I never owned one. I'm not even sure that I've ever been in one, but a lot of people like them. Now the leaf blowers have died down <laughs> and Twiggy is out in the hallway with some kind of a squeaky toy. So you might hear other noises that are strange coming from the background. Oh no, I've kind of screwed up the windshield. There we go.
All right, just putting on the doorknobs. And almost done. I could spend a lot more time drawing the Subaru, but I'm reasonably happy with it, actually. It doesn't quite look like a drawing I would do. Well, yes, it does. What am I talking about? Of course it does, but there we go. Got to keep... Oh, gone. Oh, Mark points out that it's a European Subaru. I didn't even know they had U Subarus in Europe. They have everything over there, those people. Oh, <gasps> really? <laughs> a really ugly sweater. Is it really ugly? Yes, it's really ugly. There's no question. What period would you say this is from? I mean, it screams of synthetic, doesn't it? It looks like uh, an acrylic sweater. I don't know. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with that, but I'm not a big fan of the acrylic sweater myself. But this one, I mean, these, this one is fairly hideous. So the material is kind of hideous, and the... Uh, sure what to say about this pattern or these colors but I don't want to sound like a snob you know in fact they ki it kind of has a slightly southwestern look to it to this pattern and now I am a southwesterner strange as that may seem I am a southwesterner you know I'm going to start wearing like giant turquoise and silver rings and bolero ties. I actually do have a bolo tie. I should wear it sometime f during Draw With Me. Just, you know, to represent, as they say. What else is that? do I have to wear? I, a cowboy hat? I actually have a modified cowboy hat that I wear when I ride a horse. <laughs> That's another thing about me now is that I am now an equestrian. Strange but true. Many transformations I am undergoing thanks to the pandemic, I was going to say. <sighs> Phew. Yes, as Jen says, we could recolor it and make it pretty. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure. Oh, oh here we go. Okay. Another S, Snoopy. Again, I've never drawn Snoopy. And now you'll see me. Doing, trying to do it. Yeah, this is this is not easy because you, you know if you rush it, if you rush, this is a fairly simple set of lines here. But if you rush it, you will you will not have the expression that you want. I mean, particularly that mouth. That mouth is key, and I think it's it's difficult to do. That eye, getting that eye just right. Oh, no. yeah, my, my, my Snoopy looks a little bit like a, a balding middle-aged man. I mean, that's what Snoopy is. I don't know. Maybe he's just another aspect of Charles Schultz, his creator. Yeah, I've kind of drawn this too close to the bottom of the page, so he's getting a little runty. Does he have a tail? I guess he must. I think this is the kind of thing that I could have drawn extremely slowly to get it really right, because like I didn't really get his nice round belly. But it's actually it's actually not bad considering I've never drawn him before. I'm sure you've drawn Snoopy many times. Oh, there it's gone. It's gone. Tail is by the back foot, is it? Oh, well, I'll never know now. It's gone. I'll never see that Snoopy again. All right, let's get going. Let's get ready for another. 
What's going to come up next? <gasps> Snoop Dogg. All right, let's try Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg is everywhere these days, isn't he? He's like become my like best friends with Martha Stewart. My son actually did uh, worked on a show with Snoop Dogg. Said he was just like the most insanely nice person he's ever ever met or ever worked with. And so that is great to hear. It's nice to hear that people who seem nice actually are nice. And uh, my joke about him was that I thought that he was Pakistani because he looks a lot like people I knew in Pakistan when I was growing up. But I don't think he is. Do a lot of people think that? Do you hear that a lot? People thinking that maybe Snoop Dogg is Pakistani? <laughs> I haven't read a lot about it. I don't think so. I don't think it's a thing. I'm just... I'm liking these mutton chops and I'm afraid I'm going to run out of time. Snoop Dogg, I'm sorry. Snoop Dogg is more than a two-minute subject. Quick, I need more coffee. Oh. Sprite. All right. All right, it's Sprite. Have you ever drawn a can of Sprite before? Or are you going to look back on this day and say, you know what? That was the day that I found my true calling. That was the day that I became... I found my muse. Cans of Sprite. Hey, I've never even really looked at this before. I can't say I've drunk a huge amount of Sprite in my life, but... It is... Uh, it's all about this lettering, and I'm just too, it's, I'm moving too fast to be able to really get it accurately. It is, uh, it's kind of a challenge. It's interesting, though. Interesting design here, the way these letters kind of interlock with each other. You, can, you could just focus on the negative space, honestly, and uh, that might be a good thing. Hmm. Yeah, this is definitely about the, that negative space between the letters and the sort of splash here. And then, okay, I shouldn't have rushed because I actually have more time than I thought. I was so anxious about getting this in time that now I have a little bit of time left over to kind of correct some of the things that I did when I was rushing. No, my can is, is a bit short. It's a bit short. But a sprite is short, isn't a sprite short? A sprite's like a little person. So, oh, gone. <sighs> All right. Hi, Angel. Nice to meet you. Um, Jen knows the guy who invented Mountain Dew. That's like Sprite with another, oh, with a cup of coffee poured into it. Here's another S. <laughs> Steve. Steve. You know what? I think have we done more? I think we might have already passed ten. Oh God, this is like Steve with a lumpy head. All right, Steve. I mean, I gotta say, I have been like a ridiculous fan of Steve Jobs always, even though I've heard that he's you know. I mean, I've read 
I read the book. I know you used to prick. And, uh, nonetheless, do you know that Apple is the largest company in the world? Did you know that Apple is now the largest company there's ever been? It's insane. I mean, I've been, I have been using Apple products since 1983. I would never ever have thought in the early days of doing it when like nobody had them and it was sort of, you know, it's like, well, why would you get an expensive computer that doesn't run most software? It was because of this guy that I was, was committed to Apple as I was. Because he had a vision of the world and the way it should be and what technology could do. And uh, a lot of tech people didn't, didn't really respect what he did because his vision wasn't just technological, it was sociological. But anyway, you may not agree with me. <gasps> Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We've done ten. You want to keep going? Let's keep going, man. We've got two or three more to go. Huh? There we go. What do you think? Let's throw it over here. This, in case you didn't know. Is, uh, what is this? You know, I lived in New York since I was 12, but I only went to the Statue of Liberty maybe like two or three years ago. I guess that makes me a real New Yorker. God, this hand is difficult to do. Um, yeah. And actually that was, you know, the usual because we had like family visiting and, uh, you know, it's fine, we'll go there. So... Um, and I, and I never went up. I never went up. But now that I'm a Southwesterner, I guess now I can. If you're in New York, you're not really supposed to go up there. But if you are, uh, you know, if you're just a visiting tourist, like I will probably be next time I go to New York, then... You know, be obliged. I think it's like part of your your visa requirements. Good God, this this is a tough one. Got to admit, it's tough, but you can do it. It's tough to do it in two minutes because you have to kind of decide what you're going to give short shrift to. And my statue of liberty is. Colliding with Snoop Dogg. So, oh well. That was a t that was the hardest one. Okay. Mm. Okay, I got. We got. I think one or two more. I forget. I forget how many. I, I think that. I'm not sure. Here we go. All right. So this animal is, of course, a stork. The obstetrician of the animal kingdom. How did he ever come up with that idea that storks deliver babies? It's like a ridiculous idea. I mean, is it for children? Because first of all, if you if 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 you're going to try and kind of pass that off to kids. You have to begin by explaining to them what the hell a stork is. Right? Because the only thing we really know about storks is that they deliver babies. So if it wasn't for that part of kind of the nature of storks, well, then why would you even know about a stork? So I don't know. Have you ever tried to explain to a child that that's where babies come from? I'd be interested to know whether that was an easy sell. 
Doesn't seem like it would be. All right, that, that actually was not too bad. And I have 30 seconds left. Wow. Who would have thunk it that a stork would be one of the easier ones? I should have just done this without reference. All right, draw a stork. All right, draw a Snoop Dogg. Seen how that turned out. Could do that later. Maybe we'll do that next time. No reference. Reference free. This actually might be my favorite drawing, despite all the aspersions that I cast on snorks, storks, snorks. Mm. Oh, I think we're done. Uh, that was fun. What do you think? Let me look at my overall page. Look at my overall page. Here we go. You go. Yeah, I mean, I could work on this some more, maybe like find some inter interconnections between these things, but uh, that's, that's interesting. All right, I enjoyed that. Did you enjoy that? Was that good? Was that was fun? Baron Tyson liked it. All right. So good. Yes. Here comes Twiggy in the cat bed. Bye. Bye. All right. What happened to me? I'm out of focus. There we go. Um, yes, that was fun. It's true what JF says. No time to overthink. When you moving that quickly... I mean, I was doing a lot of talking while I was drawing, which, you know, and I was also making excuses. So, yeah, that was fun. Kosha, I'm glad that you were able to join us. Kosha, you're good at fast drawings. You're good at zipping them out. Some people are only good at really slow drawings, but I think it's good to have multiple speeds, multiple speeds in your gearbox. It takes a while to get that. I think you have to start by drawing slowly, and then you gotta loosen up, you know? Cause I think, I think it's, uh, it's, as Kristen says, it is a rush, but also it makes you, you know, if you are the kind of person who draws really slowly and carefully, you know, if this is like running downhill, right? It's like being chased by a giant snowball. It is, it is hard. Um, Barbara couldn't have attempted it four months ago. You could have attempted it. I'm sure you could have. Sure, you could have tried, but um, yeah. So that kind of thing, you know, this is a great thing to do. You know what I'm kind of thinking? I'm kind of thinking we should do this on a regular basis. You know, like every, I don't know, a couple months, do another 10 and 20. Come up here. Come up here. Oh, yes. Here she is, Twiggy. <laughs> it's nice to see you, too. Um this so yes twiggy is uh twiggy is over a year old now and um she's fully grown the vet said that she was overgrown that she was getting that she was getting fat so we've been scaling back on her food but i don't think she i think she, i mean this is a very muscular animal she can walk i mean i've gone on hikes with her five six miles right you can hike you want to go for a walk you like going for a walk yeah, she likes going for walks. So we will go for a walk. Okay. Uh. Um, yes, okay, so people like the idea of doing it on a regular basis. That's that's good. Ingrid wants to do twenty. Well, we did thirteen. But yes, I agree. Twenty well that was my first thought, like let's do twenty in twenty two. Yes, okay, you had that idea too. Twenty twenty in twenty two. Yes, we could do it. We could do it. We could do it. We will do that at some future point. Or have we missed that? Have we missed the moment? Maybe. Maybe we have. 
Um, so, yes. Um, I challenge myself and am pleased with most, but the people. Yeah, pe yeah, we're more critical of ourselves when it comes to drawing people. If you draw a stapler and it's like kind of bent out of shape, it's fine. But if you draw a Snoop Dogg like that, he's not recognizable as Snoop Dogg. It doesn't mean it's, it's any worse of a drawing. It just means that there's more things. And we're also, we're just so programmed about looking at people, looking at human faces. We know them so well that, but we also don't know quite why we know them so well. You know, we don't know quite how the features fit together. So we know it when we see it, but we don't necessarily know, know it when we draw it. So, you know, those are all things to, uh, to consider. So yes. Um, Good. So Linda tried a brush pen. Yeah, a brush pen is a great tool to use for a thing like this because you can move quickly. Um, the pen that I was using is uh, is a soft, it's almost like a brush pen. It's not quite, but it has a soft point, and that's nice. Um, so, yes, good. Uh, um, Virginia had to mush her stuff together. Me too. Me too. I had uh, Snoop Dogg has the Statue of Liberty behind him with his sweaters over it and the sweater. It's kind of what's cool about it. I like I like the interconnections between these things. That's kind of fun too. So yes, this is good. Oh okay, okay. I just realized I'm just blathering here, but I do have an agenda. And here's the agenda. Um, I wanted to do um, a sketchbook tour, which is a thing that I usually do every week. Sketchbook tour. Um, and normally, in the past, I have done them. I've found artists who I love or who I know and gotten their sketchbooks. In fact, Kosha, could you make me a video of one of your new sketchbooks so that I can uh, share it? Please do and send it to me. I would love to share a Kosha sketchbook. Hers are all fantastic. I'm gonna show an old one of mine. Um, and yeah, this is just, this is a sort of a random one that I pulled out that I quite like. And I just thought I would share it with you. And what I try to do is, because I could go on and on and on about it while showing you a sketchbook, I have decided, I put a timer on it. So it's like three and a half minutes is all I am allowed, allowing myself to do. So here we go. It's a three and a half minute tour. A three and a half minute tour. Yeah. Call it um, Gregory's Isle. Anyway, here we go. These are just sort of random dudes. And, uh, oh yeah, this is a game I played with a friend of mine where he described people in his neighborhood and I had to draw what I thought they looked like. So that's what these are. This is sort of random people. And then and then I sent in the pictures and um, he told me whether, what they actually look like, which is sometimes quite accurate. So yeah, so there's, these are the various people, like a girl who only wears teal and white year round. Here's various drawings of pens drawn with the pens. So these are like, like, these are selfies of pens. God, I remember that pen. Yeah, that was like a weird kind of rapidograph sort of pen. They've long gone. And this was like the greatest pen of all time, the Rotric Rapidoliner. Oh my God, that pen was so good. It was a rapidograph and you could throw out the whole inner bit and put the new one in. That was awesome. God, that pen was great. Long gone, doesn't exist anymore. This is, I think, from a vacation. Yeah, this is vacationing in the Dominican Republic. And here I'm trying to draw a Caribbean sunset. <laughs> sunset inspired me to do the same sort of crap. Here it says, Caribbean sunset inspired me to do the same sort of crappy paintings the local guys hawk um, on the beach on slabs of wood or cheap T-shirts. Yeah. Um, what's this? People in the pool. Uh, this is on the beach. Here we see. I was doing this stuff. I kind of like this idea of like little swatches of whatever it was that I was painting with. And a lighthouse. People in the, in the water. Au bord de la mer. And uh, somebody's lying on the ground. Chaise with a towel on her face. Chocolate. A bunch of chocolates that were melting in the, in the hot sun. This is sitting in the airport 
I mean, imagine our plane was so late that I was able to do this whole watercolor. But, uh, you know, it wasn't bad. I like, I kind of like this negative space of the windows. You can see the plane and the baggage carts through it. This is on the plane. Influenced by my iPod soundtrack, The Dirges of the Decemberists and David Sedaris. And here's a little map of our trip. Um, here I am inspired by that approach. So I was doing things in my neighborhood, drawing them the same way. Central Park, this is the really cool little pond, you know, where you can get these model boats. And people have their own, but you can, I think you can also rent them. I love that place. And this is just like little random two-minute drawings of different things around my house. I remember that watch. I love that watch. It's part of Patty's wheelchair, paper cutter, Jack's guitar. Here's a pile of trash. In, it's not even trash. This is like good stuff. It just happens to be sitting in a waste paper basket for some reason. This is uh, in the East Village. And uh, I did it. To get through this whole damn thing in time. There it is, volume 29. <sighs> that was fun. I hope you like that. What type of watercolor kit did I use on the plane? Um, I, I think I probably used, I probably used like this Windsor Newton, little Windsor Newton uh, thing. Uh, yeah. Do I plan where I'm going to put the text before I begin drawing? I sometimes, sometimes I do. I like to think about the whole page. I have kind of a sense like it needs something over there, so I'll put a big word and then it needs some balance. It's sort of a compositional thing. I have a bit of a sense of it, but I'm not sure. Um, yeah, this, th I mean, rapidographs are still available. This, this was a very, these were two very particular rapidographs. One that was almost like a dip pen in its design. It had a little lid cap that you couldn't put on the on the back end because it was shaped like this little stick. It was really annoying, but I, you could use do the finest, finest lines. And then the Rapido liner was a very particular thing. Back in the days, those of you who were members of the Everyday Matters group on Yahoo 19 years ago, can you believe it? We were all super into these Rapido liners. And then one day, Kohenor said, guess what? We're not making these anymore, except in Europe. And then a little while later, it was like, no, we're not making them there either. And everybody was like, what? Because literally, I had evangelized for this pen to the point that everybody was using them. Because you could draw. They had all the fluidity and beauty and, and control of a rapidograph, But then you didn't have to worry about it getting all clogged up because you could just pull out the insert, throw it away, and put in a new one. So it was like a pen within a pen. Anyway. What could be more boring than this old geezer talking about a pen you couldn't buy for 20 years? Anyway. Um, so yes, what kind of a sketchbook was it? It was a Canson sketchbook. This is before there were Hanamula sketchbooks. And I was forced to use Canson. But the one thing about it is it had this... Um, Thing that I don't really use that much anymore, which is a spiral binding. But you can throw, open them nicely, flatly. But I like a book that looks like a book now. Have I used ever used an actual twig? <laughs> I said twig, and Twiglet thought I was talking about her. So, no, I, no, I haven't used a twig. No. Although my, f I have a friend Jason who uses a chopstick. But anyway, <sighs> ah, all right. Thank you. Um, thank you for joining me today. Thanks for doing this hurried drawing. We're off to a good start. 2022, at least drawing-wise, seems pretty good, right? Seems pretty good. Um, what do you think? You like it? You happy? We're going to go for a walk soon. We try and put in three to four miles a day, me and Twiggy. Yeah. And uh, she's ready to go. Uh, um, Verena, welcome. And I'm glad that you were taking a lunch break. Um, join us each Thursday here at lunchtime. Whenever Verena is ready for lunch, we are ready to draw. And we'll do it every Thursday as we have been doing it now for, I don't know, we've done it for a long time. And we are doing it now into this new year. Maybe this is the f fourth year we're doing it. I don't know. 
Anyway, um, thank you all for joining me. And oh, so this, yeah, so um, I did want to share one thing, which was so my weekly essays that I send out, I know I badgered you about them before, but now I'm doing them a couple times a week. I think some of you like that, but I like it because I love, I just love this process of writing these essays about creativity. I've been doing it for a couple years now every Friday, and now I'm doing it on Tuesday as well. And uh, if you sign up right now, you will get a sample of what that's like. Uh, it's free. And uh, you can just do it by going to dannysessays.com. I tell you that, and I hope that you'll do it. So, all right, thank you. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for being here. And um, I will see you again next Thursday without... I'm not sure what we'll be doing. I'll probably think about it in the next few days. And um, oh, and if you subscribe to this channel, by the way, you'll be reminded of that. But also, a lot of times, I post on the YouTube blog. If you subscribe to this on YouTube, I post on the YouTube blog like what I'm thinking we're going to do. And I give you that notification a couple days early. And I think only people who are subscribed are usually notified about that. In fact, of course they are, because nobody's notified if they don't subscribe. But if you subscribe, you will, um, you know, you'll get a notification that I put up a blog post and various other things. I'm doing an awful lot of stuff right now. On Mondays, I do the podcast. On Tuesdays, I send out an essay. Um, on Wednesday, I usually do a blog post on YouTube. On Thursday, we do Draw With Me. On Friday, I do a video essay. And I send out a written essay. So, God, how do I find the time? And I take this dog for a walk. And I run sketchbook school. But I drink a lot of coffee. I'm in peak physical condition. I take, um, I don't know, I take a lot of drugs. No, I don't. I wish I took a lot of drugs. It's not that kind of a person. It might make life easier. It might make me more productive. Anyway, I see it's time to stop. I'll see you next week before I continue to blather and, uh, you know, get myself in trouble. Thanks for drawing with me today. We'd love to see what you made. So please post it on social media or put it in the Sketchbook School schoolyard and make sure to tag it, hashtag SBS Draw With Me. Thanks very much to our sponsors, Hanamula and Windsor and & Newton. And if you'd like some more inspiration for your creativity, here are three things that you can do. One, subscribe to this channel, and you'll know when I make new videos, which I do every week. Two, sign up for my free weekly newsletter. A lot of people seem to like it, maybe because it's free. And third, watch another video.